when we're asked to graph y is less than a negative 1, we were used to doing that on a number line, but we are asked to do this actually using a coordinate plane. So you find a place where y is a negative 1. There's one place, right? Where else is y going to be negative 1? Horizontal line, good. Do I need a solid line or a dashed line? Why is it dashed? Doesn't equal, okay? So we need a dashed line where y is a negative 1. And then we ask ourselves if y is less than a negative 1, which way do we shade? Down. Anything getting smaller than that negative 1? Okay. So we get to color today. This is our advanced math color day. All right, next one. What kind of an equation are we going to, what kind of inequality do we have here? Quadratic, okay? So when we're looking for a quadratic, we know that this would be very similar to y equals x squared plus 1, right? But it's a parabola opening up and shifted up 1. So our vertex was normally at 0, 0. It's now at 0, 1. We're opening upward. If we move one step away on either side of our axis of symmetry, 1 squared is? 1, right? So we're 1 up. If we're 2 steps away from our vertex, 4 up. 2 squared is 4. 3 steps away gets us 3 squared is 9, right? So we'd be 9 up from our vertex. All right, do we have a solid parabola or a dashed parabola? Because it's equal to, right? So we want a solid parabola. And then we have to decide which way to shade. So y is less than this x squared plus 1. Is it going to be shading below the parabola or within the parabola? Okay, so decide which one you think it is. Okay, and then let's try a point to be, to be sure to verify. Easy point usually to try is the origin. Doesn't matter which point you try. And sometimes the origin is part of your graph, so you have it's part of your solution or your uh, inequality, so you have to pick a different point. But let's put 0, 0 in here and decide is 0 less than or equal to 0 squared plus 1? Yes, 0 is less than 1, isn't it? So we want to shade in the direction of the 0, 0, which means we're shading outside of our parabola. Because y is smaller than that curve below. All right, questions on this one? All right, feeling good. All right, next one. Now we want to sketch the graph of 2x minus y equals 3. Okay, so 2x minus y equals 3 is what kind of function? Standard form of a linear equation, right? Okay, linear inequality in this case. So we want to get the y all by itself if we do what we typically do and get it into slope y-intercept form. So we take the 2x to the other side, and we'll have a negative y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. And now we have to make it a positive y, so we're dividing by negative 1, right? That's going to change the sign of everyone. Positive 2x minus 3, but what does that do to the inequality? It switches it. When we divide by a negative 1 or a negative number, we have to switch the inequality. Adding and subtracting doesn't change it, but dividing by a negative does. So we say y is going to be less than or equal to 2x minus 3. How do we graph that? 3 on the, um, the y-intercept is 3. And then up 2 and over 1. Up 2, right 1. Up 2, right 1. Up 2, right 1. 
down two left one, down two left one, down two left one. Solid or dashed? Solid. Try to dash it anyway. Try to make nice straight lines, much straighter than mine was, please. Okay, now Y is going to be smaller than this, so think about it. Where do you think we're going to shade? Below the line or above the line? Below. We think it might be below. Let's test and verify. Is 0, 0 one of our solutions to our line? No, so we can plug it in. 0 times 2 minus 0. Is that greater than or equal to 3? No, so we can't shade above the line. We need to shade below. All right, suddenly things got a little more difficult. Okay. We have two linear equations, actually three linear equations, right? Okay. So let me show you another method for graphing, Okay, and it's going to help you later on. If I want to find, if I'm in standard form, gentlemen, please, if I'm in standard form, I can find the intercepts of this very, very easily. So if I want the intercepts, I say, let's let x be 0. If x is 0, it's gone. So what's y going to be? <coughs> Negative 4. Now I let y be 0. If y is 0, cover it up, and what's x? A positive 4. So I'm at 0 over 4 down, and I'm at 4 over zero up, and I can draw my line. Do I want a solid line or a dashed line? Solid. Now before we go crazy with our shading, we can ask ourselves which way we think we're going to shade. If x minus y is smaller than 4, can we try 0, 0? So 0 minus 0, is that smaller than 4? Yes, so we want to shade in the direction of zero, but we're just going to tell ourselves that that's the way we're going. The little arrow for now, so we don't cover up too much stuff. Okay, next line. Let's do the same thing. Let's find our intercepts. So when x is zero, what does y have to be? Two. When y is zero, what will x be? Two-thirds. So we're at 0 over 2 up, we're at 2 thirds over 0 up, and if you want more points to be able to see where this is going, the 3 would go, 3x would go to the other side, so your slope is going to be a negative 3. So we are going down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. Solid or dashed line? Solid. So we make our solid line. It's got a very steep slope. Okay. Now let's try that zero zero again because zero zero is not a solution, so we should be okay. Zero plus zero is that less than two? Yes. So we want to shade in the direction of zero zero. We're shading this way. Okay, so just put an arrow there to remind yourself. We're, we're gonna, we will eventually, but we want to have a chance to grade the, or graph this one before we do our shading and make cover things up too much. Okay, so our last line is x is greater than negative one. So find a place where x is negative one. Vertical or horizontal line. Vertical, solid or dashed. Okay, so we dash our line. Where is x bigger than negative 1? To the right. Okay, so we're going to the right. So now that we've got our lines, we can do our shading. Okay. Uh, it can be helpful, or you can do different hash marks. So a lot of times, if I don't have a different color, 
I will make one of them go horizontal. I'll make another one go diagonal following that line. And then I'll make a third one going in another direction so we can tell where these are going. Okay, ends up looking pretty busy. So you want to wait until you've got all of your lines graphed before you do your shading. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have colored pencils, bring them. I don't have enough for everyone to have a set, and on a test I can't have you have you sharing a box. <laughs> Too easy to share answers then. Okay, questions on these? All right, we're taking it up a notch. Next direction says, this time do the same thing, but I want you to label the solution's vertices. Tell me where they intersect. Okay. So no problem with this one, right? Intercept form, or it's in standard form, so we can find intercepts. X is 0. Y has to be 1. X is what when Y is 0? 1. So 0, 1, 1, 0. At the slope of negative 1. Solid or dashed line? Solid. We could try 0 because it's not part of that line. So 0 plus 0, is that less than 1? Yep, so we know we're shading below toward the 0. Makes it true. All right, the next one is a little weird, right? What does that look like to you? Yes, it's quadratic, isn't it? But instead of opening up, this one's going to open. No. The y is sideways to the side, okay? So this one's opening to the side, okay? Now, the first instinct can be to say, let's get the x by itself. So x would be y squared minus 5, right? So do we suspect that that is a parabola opening sideways shifted right or left or up or down? Hard to know, right? Because we've studied parent functions that had a y equals, right? But not so much an x equals. So let's solve for y, since we're used to solving for y. We want to get this y squared by itself. We'll take the x to the other side. So a negative y squared is a negative x minus 5. Sorry, and I want to put an equal sign. We're dealing with inequalities here. So it was greater than. Now what do we do? Divide by a negative 1 and switch the inequality. So we would have a y is less than x plus 5. And then we have to make it a plain old y, right? So we would take the square root. So when we take the square root, we have to remember that we have to remember our plus or minus the square root of x plus 5. So now what do you think has happened? Has it shifted it left or right or up or down? It's with the x, so it's going to be left 5. Okay? Left 5. Um, because now we have the y by itself, right? And so if it was the square root of x, that would be at 0, 0. But when the x, the 5 is with it, it didn't matter if it was rational functions or quadratics or absolute value or logarithms or exponential. When we have a plus with the 5, it means it's going to move it to the left 5. There's a plus with the x within the function, or within what's happening to it, the operation. Okay, so we're moving this to the left 5. 
One, two, three, four, five. There's our vertex. It's positive, so we're opening to the right. Now let's think of what happens if we move one place over. What is the square root of one? One. So we would get plus one or negative one. Okay. And that makes sense because, oops, are we doing that right? We plug in a negative 4, right? Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1, okay? Now let's think about another number that we want to plug in. Square root of 4 is 2, right? So we want to move 4 steps away. Okay, it's a negative 1. When we're at negative 1, negative 1 plus 5 is 2. 4, square root of 4 is positive or negative 2. Make sense? And when we are 3 squared 9 away from our vertex, then that would make us 3 up and 3 down, positive or negative 3. So 9 steps away from the vertex. What plus 5 gets me 9? Four. So if we're at positive 4, we would be up at positive 3 or negative 3. Solid or dash? Dash. Why is it dash? We only have a greater than sign, right? No equal to. So we know it's dashed. All right, prediction. Are we shading inside or outside if it's going to be bigger than or less than? We think maybe inside, right? Has to be smaller than the parabola. Let's check to be sure. So when we pl plug 0 into our initial equation, 0 minus 0 squared, is that greater than negative 5? Is 0 greater than negative 5? Okay, 0 is greater than negative 5, so 0, 0 is a solution, and so we want to shade toward the 0. Okay, so now we're ready to shade. We have both of our inequalities. Now, the other thing that we need to note is what are the points of intersection, right? So we had one point of intersection at negative 1, 2, and the other vertex was... 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 3. How could we have done that if we didn't graph? Yeah, solve them, right? We could say, let's change the x's to all negatives, or change, multiply this one by negative and combine, right? So we can still solve them normally like we did in section one, uh, 7, 1, and 7, 2. But this is the graphing method of finding the, the intersections. Okay, so now we shade. And the only thing in common with the two is this little area right in here. Questions on this one? All right, feeling good, looking good. All right, next one. So let's use the intercept method for this one. When x is 0, what's y? x is 0, we cover it up. y it becomes, and then when y is 0, what's x? 2 thirds again, right? Okay, so we're 0 over 2 up. 2 thirds over, 0 up. Again, slope of negative 3, right? Down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. Solid or dash? Dash.
Is zero, zero a point to try? So zero, is that bigger than two? I'm going to move that way, away from the zero, zero. OK. Next line. When x is zero, what's y? When y is zero, what's x? Negative one third. Okay, so we're at negative zero, negative one, and one negative one third zero. The slope of this line is how much? Negative three over one, right? Down three over one, down three over one. What do you notice about these lines? They're parallel, right? Are they going to have any points of intersection? Uh, no. Solid or dashed line? Dashed. So no points of intersection on this one. That would be a no solution, right? If we had to solve them um, algebraically. And which way are we shading if we have a 3x plus y less than left? Are they going to overlap at all? We try 0, 0, 0 plus 0 is not less than negative 1. So we don't want to shade to the right. We have to shade to the left. Um, it's possible. They just wouldn't have a point of intersection. All right, feeling good? It's awesome when we can color, right? All right, next one. Now we throw in some real world applications. A consumer surplus is the measure of the the measure of the amount that consumers would be willing to pay above what they already did pay. Okay, those of you who got a new iPhone 7. Okay, was it too expensive? Obviously not, you paid for it, right? But what's that threshold? Okay, how much more could Apple have charged before you decide, hey, it's not worth it, I'm going to something else? Make sense? That's the consumer surplus. The producer surplus is the measure below which the producer would be willing to receive their goods, money for their goods. So they're saying, hey, guess what? As a company, I'm making money on the iPhone at this price. I could still make money at this point and be, would be willing to sell it for this price. Okay, We're trying to find that equilibrium point, that balance between the two. So to find that, we have two equations. One of them is P equals 81 minus 0 0.05 or 0 point, 0 0.055x. And the other one is P equals 0.125x. Looks really bad. But if we wanted to find out where those two lines would intersect, what would we do? We want to figure out, we could graph it, but I don't know if you want to deal with a slope that's 125 thousandths or 55 thousandths, right? So let's think about how we would find this algebraically. How would we find the place where these two intersect algebraically? Yeah, P equals P, so let's make the right side equal to the right side. Okay, so let's do that. Let's take 81 minus 0 0.055x and set it equal to 0.125x and solve. So we'll find the x coordinate of that solution. And when we add 0.125 and 0 0.055, we get what? Let me check my math. 0.125 plus 0 0.055. So 0.18, good, dividing by 81. Sorry, went the wrong way, dividing by 0 0.18. 0 0.18 plus 0 0.055. 
450. Okay, so they're crossing when x is 450, which is the easier equation to put 450 into. The second one, so we're going to say p will be 0.125 times 450. So we get 56.25. That's better. Right? Okay. So we know that our x axis, we're used to putting x on x, right? It's going to be this one. The p axis will be this one. If we need to get to 56 and we have 10 blocks to work with, is everyone okay with using each block by 10? Okay. So maybe label every other. 20, 40, 60. Okay, you could get more minute and go by every 6, right? But that might be a little tedious. So let's make it easier. If our x has to go to 450 and we have 10 blocks this way, we should probably make each one worth 5. Because 5 times 50 would get me or 5 times 10 would get me 500, right? So and maybe label every other and call them 10. Or sorry, I did that wrong. 500 divided by 10 is 50. So label every other by 100. So we know that we have these guys intersecting at 56.25450, somewhere about here. Okay, so now let's go back to these original equations. If we let x be 0, can we find the p-intercept here? How high do we go? 81, right? Okay. When x is 0, we are at 81 high. And we know we're going through this point because that's the intersection of those two equations. Okay. So we think that we're going to have something that looks like this. Okay. Our other equation, if x is 0, what's y? Or what's p? 0, right? So this one goes through the origin and goes through this point. Hopefully you've drawn nice straight lines. And this place where we were at 56.25 is our equilibrium point. That's the sweet spot. People would be willing to pay up to 56.5. The producer would be willing to charge at the lowest 56.25. Okay, so that's your equilibrium point. Does that make sense? Okay, so this one is really a, the producers are willing to charge that price or under, actually, the equilibrium price or above, right? And this one's willing to go up to that point. Make sense? All right, and this is what it looks like in Desmos if, with a nice straight line. These guys are willing to go down to this point. That's how much lower the producer will sell for. Consumers are willing to buy it up to this point. And then they get price out of the market. 
All right, make sense? What questions do you have on this one? <coughs> Looks terrible, right? Until we find an intersection and start building our graph from that. All right, last example. Now we're going to talk about nutrition. And as our population ages, this is something that dietitians could be doing more and more of with our elderly population especially, but probably should be doing it with us young people too. Okay, We find out that we have a dietary supplement for both food X and food Y. Okay, could be a smoothie, right? It could be um, some granola bar or what have you uh, that has or a granola cereal or what have you. Food X and Food Y have, they're trying to design, design a supplement, and we need 20 units of calcium. Or food X contains 20 units of calcium, 15 units of iron, and 10 units of vitamin B. And Food Y has 10 units of calcium, 10 of iron, and 20 of vitamin B per ounce. And we're trying to figure out if we need a minimum of 280 units of calcium, 160 of iron, and 180 of vitamin B, what is the optimal measurement, or what do we, how do we set the, or how do we balance those two foods? Okay, it could be someone, a zookeeper at the zoo, trying to balance the nutrients for the gorillas. Okay, or it could be a dietitian trying to balance it for nursing home patients. Does that make sense? Or a food service person for high school students. All right, so the best way to do this is to say, guess what? I know I need calcium. So make a table. I also need iron. And I know I'm working with vitamin B. Okay. Food X has how many units of calcium? How many of iron? How many of vitamin B? And food Y has how many units of calcium? Iron and vitamin B. So we want to make a supplement that has at least how many units of calcium? The requirements are 280, right? And what of iron? And finally, we need a supplement that has at least how many units of vitamin B? When you have it in a table format, do you think you can figure out how to set up your equations now? Your inequalities? Twenty times what? X plus 10 times has to be bigger than or equal to 280, right? That's our calcium equation. What's our iron equation going to say? Right? And then finally, vitamin B. And 180, right? Now, to avoid going into negatives, we know that we have to have at least some positive X and some positive Y. So two more inequalities would be X should be greater than or equal to 0, and Y should be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, we can't have negative x or negative y. Okay. Now, I didn't give you graph paper on this one, but do you think that by using the intercept method, you can figure out what your axes should be? So we know we're only in the positive x and y axis. If we let x be 0, what would y be? 28. So one of my points for this one is 0, 28. And if y is 0, what's x? 
14. If x is 0, what's y? 16. See how these intercepts are coming into play? And y is 0, what's x? 12. All right. And then when x is 0, what's y? 9. And when y is 0, what's x? 18. So we know our x has to range between 14 and 18, right? 4 to 12 to 18. Okay. So as long as you make your x-axis be 0 to 20, you should be fine. And your y's are ranging from 28. We have 28, 16, and 9. So as long as we stay under 30, we're okay. And then we graph those points. All right, do you want to see that graph, or do you think you can You want to see it graphed? Okay. So this first line was 0, 28, so we need to go up, up to 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we could go by threes. 30. And then my y's are going up to 28. So again, by 30, right? Up to 30. Did I do that wrong? Doesn't matter. As long as we, we can be consistent, right? So 9, 18, 27, and 30. All right. So we know we're in the first quadrant only. And we have a point at 0, 28, and 14, 0. Okay, so this is one of our lines. It happens to be the calcium line. Okay, and we need to be bigger than that, right? So we're shading to the right. Does that make sense? Should have done this in blue. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about iron, so I'll flip-flop them and make iron be blue. Iron was 0, 16, 12, 0. So 0 over 16 up, and 12 over 0 up. And that's this line. Going that way. And finally, we have 0 over 9 up and 18 over 0 up. That's going to be our green line. So 0 over 9 up, 18 over 0 up. Okay, and that one's going this way. So where do all, all three overlap? Everyone see where they are going to overlap? This one's going this way. This one's going this way. Red's going that way, right? We have such a high calcium requirement. 20 units, right? And we want to get 280. So we've got to have lots of calcium. So this is going to be our, our solution. Anything, actually I'll do it with it in black. Anything from here on up. And that's that vertex that you're interested in. Okay? Questions on this one? So we're interested in where does the green line and the red line intersect. And you can find that. All right, assignment. And that was the intersection of those two points. All right, so assignment is this. I believe the boldface problems that are the required ones are 36, 39, 45, and 70.
but of course the others are 36, 45, 49, sorry, 36, 45, 36, 39, 45, 70. So set, uh, four problems if you only do the minimum, but we recommend and encourage the others for extra practice.